So welcome to my YouTube channel, that's what we call the good life. Now today I'm going to take you on a harvest around my home garden and also my allotment. And I'm also going to be giving you some hints and tips on when you um, when you do harvest things, because a lot of people say, is this big enough, can I harvest it yet, is it right? Um, and I just thought that would be really helpful for you guys. So if you've not already subscribed to my channel, if you could please do so, because you'll get lots of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year from my allotment, my home garden, and from time to time, my home kitchen. Now, let's start off over here where my beans are so these ones have nearly finished off but i have still got a few these are french beans and i've got a variety of different colors although most of them are just purple and green so what you're looking for is the ones that are have swelled out a little bit more for a french bean so that is about the right size that is a little bit too small if you can see that up there you know, and while there's no hard or fast rules of when you pick them, you know, it wouldn't do any harm if you, if you pick that too small, it would still taste perfectly good. Um, you want to pick them when they're about the right size. You also don't want them to get too big because then the, it will, the beans will swell out inside and that will send a signal to the plants to start producing seed and you'll get lots of um, beans with lots of, you can see the actual you know the beans inside it and you don't want that so it's a bit more of an example there so that's that's too small and i'll say that still needs to go a little bit more but you could pick that one if you wanted to so again there's no real hard and fast rules as to when the right time is you're not gonna with things like beans you're not going to do yourself a bit of a disservice if you pick one a little bit too soon so i've got some more around here which are about ready so my beans, these ones have nearly finished and my ones over the allotment when we get over there are absolutely full of them. But yeah, they're all about the right size. But obviously those ones you'd let come on. But if you really, really need to eat some that evening and you picked a few small ones, it really wouldn't be the end of the world with things like beans. So as we move over, I've got spring onions there. Um, my ones are bunching spring onions, or allegedly, but have not started bunching yet. So I wouldn't be harvesting those. Were they normal spring onions, you'd harvest them as soon as they were big enough, you know, the type you buy in the shops, really, which I guess is the same with these, really. And um, things like this don't need to ripen, they just need to be the right size for you to be able to, you know, to get a good meal off of them. It's always worth having a pair of secateurs with you for some jobs because you can sometimes break the plant if you're not careful. So rather than just tug, 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 have a pair of these with you to, you know, to make sure. It's like when you're, when you're pulling your beans, sometimes if you just yanked them, you can pull the bean and break it. So you don't necessarily need secateurs, but sometimes hold the bean, hide the plant behind, hold the plant behind it as you pull the beans off. So my tomatoes, I'm still getting some tomatoes. I was quite fortunate in the fact that my tomatoes, I think have come quite early and I've not suffered from any blight, which I know some people in some parts of the country have done. I mean, if anyone who watches my channel, um, I do look after my plants in a certain way um, to try and stop that from happening. Um, but it's not always possible. In fact, that plant there doesn't look great, to be honest. But at the end of the day, that, that, um, that's nearly finished anyway. So you often get plants, um, you often get blight towards the end of the season. That's not unusual. So the further into the season you get, um, you, you often get it um, because the weather changes and that's how the blight spores, spores um, you know, how, how, you know, it kind of like breeds from that, the, the different kinds of weather, the humid, wet weather um, is when you're more likely to get blight. So tomatoes, you pick, when they're the right colour. So these ones are nice and red, so obviously you wouldn't pick them when they're green. Um, although if they fall off um, and they're green, you can obviously pop them on your windowsill to try and ripen them up. Um, but these ones, as soon as they're the right colour, they just come straight off. I think these are some of the obvious ones. There's other ones when we go over the allotment, which aren't quite so much. I've got some aubergines down there, which I will move on to. So I'll have to maybe come back to these. I'm planning on making some passata with these in the next day or two. I've made a massive batch of soup that's in the freezer. Because obviously you can only eat so many and give so many away. 
So the aubergine plant, this is one of the things when people say, when are they ready to harvest? Now, you could, in theory, pick an aubergine at any size. I mean, there would be no harm in picking that one that small, but you might as well let them get a little bit bigger so that they fill out a little bit more. So you're not waiting for an aubergine to ripen. So you pick it when it's big enough for you to use. So I would genuinely just go for one about that size. I think I've got about a couple on here and then let the others swell out a little bit more. Now this is where you definitely need a pair of secateurs to take an aubergine off otherwise you just wouldn't get it off without a pair of secateurs. So I know I've got one there and I believe I've got another largest one towards the back. one that's grown a little bit a little bit of an odd shape so I don't think he's going to do what he's supposed to do so I'll take him off the other one larger one around there I think I'll leave it on a little bit longer to fill out a bit more but again any of the smaller ones if I wanted to do an aubergine dish there'd be nothing stopping you just harvesting them as and when and some varieties are actually designed to be smaller these aren't these are designed to get quite large so I've got some peppers here as well but I'm waiting for them to ripen my aubergine plant has just gone so completely bonkers um, I have got some peppers there now I could harvest those when they're green or I could wait for them to change colour again the choice is yours so again people ask when can I harvest their peppers again if you want to harvest them when they're green harvest them when they're green if you want to wait for them to change colour then you can do that also so let's pop in to the greenhouse and see what we've got in there So I've got some more tomatoes which I need to take off so we might as well have those off. Sometimes even with these it's just easy just to use a set of tools just to grab them off, especially these big tomatoes because they sometimes are a little bit harder to get off. So I've got loads of fantastic cucumbers. And again, second tours, you can take them off by hand. In fact, that's a little bit too big. These are meant to be lunchbox size ones. So they should all be coming off like this. So similar thing with the cucumbers in the fact that you can pick them off at any size. So technically you could pick one of those off and use it if you wanted to, but you would just wait for them to get to the right size. So you're not waiting for anything to ripen with something like this. As soon as it's got to the size that you want, then you just take them off. I grow the lunchbox variety, variety types because personally, I find they grow a lot easier. I've just had far more success with these varieties. I have so many, I end up having to give them away. So I go for the lunchbox varieties. I've got some more cucumbers over the back there, but we won't go through those because I have absolutely tons. But we will head up the allotment now and we can take a, a tour around there and I can show you what I'm harvesting and when I harvest it. So we're now up at the allotment and I'm just gonna have a wander around and harvest a few bits and do what I did obviously say when, when you can harvest things. So I've got some potatoes here. Now obviously these are well and truly ready to dig because the plants are starting to die off. If it was earlier in on the season, you're waiting for the blooms to form. Now it does vary from variety to variety. Sometimes once the blooms are formed, and they're out nicely, you can start digging them. Others, they need to be out for a little bit longer. So it's a little bit of tr dig a few and have a look and see whether they're ready or not. But when they're dying off like this, you know they are definitely good to start digging. Now, one of the things when you're digging potatoes is you don't want to try not to fork your potato. So you have to try and dig to the side when you're loosening it up, which isn't always easy. And we all, from time to time, stick the odd fork through. So I've got to say, I'm, not, I'm having quite a good harvest of potatoes at the moment um i started harvesting them i think gosh i'm just trying to remember now it must have been at the beginning of july i think mine were ready a lot earlier than usual actually this year um and i think i could say to most people at this time of the year in september i dig what i need when i need it um, i let things swell out more i might as well leave them in the ground a little bit longer and get as much as i can for what i've got in the ground when it starts to get to october time that's when I start to dig them all up because that's when obviously we can get frost. Um, things more likely eat your potatoes when it starts to get damper and wetter. The slugs and the wireworm and all sorts of other things are more likely to start to wreak havoc on your potatoes um, once you start to hit October. Um, oh dear, I thought one there. There you go, I'll have to eat that one today. 
I'm going to be cooking some potatoes today, so I'll make sure I use those first. And that's actually another good top tip when you're digging your potatoes. If you've got any that you've put your fork through, um, eat those first because they won't keep. And also the smaller ones as well, I find. Try and eat the smaller ones first because they start to shrivel up and then by the time you get to get, to get into the small ones, you don't want to eat them. Whereas when they're first dug and they're quite small, they're actually quite tasty. So I think that'll probably be enough for me to eat for when I get back. So let's move around. So I've got some lovely beetroot here. So I had some beetroot at home, which I've harvested most of. It's felt that these have been a little bit slow coming, but I've actually got some really lovely ones coming. And again, when, when is it the right time to, to pull your beetroot? When it's the size that you want to pick it. So you could actually pick them smaller when they're more like little golf balls, or you can let them fill out a little bit more. I generally don't let my beetroots fill out and get really massive if I can help it, only because they take a little bit longer to cook. I might need a fork to get that one out. They normally come out a lot easier. Normally you can just pull them out, but it might be easier sometimes. Also, if you just watered them a little bit, it would loosen them a bit. I've got some lovely different coloured ones. Sometimes just to gently loosen it a bit, they'll make it easier to come out. Now, it's not my intention to take the little ones out as well, but sometimes the odd little ones come out with it. And then you just push the soil back. Push the soil back and push it down with your shoe. And I will be giving all this a little bit of a water a little bit later. So, yeah. Another little nice one there. If it will come out, there we go. Look, I've got some all different coloured ones there. I've actually got some orangey ones, but they're quite... And I've got a yellowy ones there, look. I've got various different colours here. I love growing the different coloured ones. I absolutely do. I think it makes it far more interesting on your plate. I really do enjoy it. So there's some lovely beetroots. And so like I say, you pick them when you're ready, when they're ready. And again, I don't harvest them all in one go. Um, if they're bigger, you would want to harvest them and not leave them in the ground because they could go woody. But when they're smaller, you can afford to leave them in the ground for another few months. You can't leave them too long because the frost can affect them. But I do generally just pick them as and when I need them a little bit more. I'm not harvesting any carrots today because I harvested absolutely tons the other day and they were quite good. I mean, some of them are a bit odd shaped, but all perfectly good eating. So those things in there aren't ready yet. There's a fennel that's almost ready, but not quite. And the parsnips there definitely aren't ready. So I've got lots of lovely kale. And kale, you pick it when there's leaves on there that are big enough. Oh, and obviously these are nice and big and they're well and truly ready to be harvested. You know, there's no qualms about that. But even when they're smaller, if they were smaller, you just wouldn't pick so many leaves off. You'd just take a few off at a time to let the plants take over. So, i just pull the plants off. This has done, this netting has done quite a good job of keeping all the predators off, but I have got a little bit of white fly. And if I'm honest, if it's too damaged, I do put it on the composter and I just use the leaves that aren't quite so damaged. But I do pull them all off anyway. I find the more that I harvest it, it stops it from taking over quite so much. But this time of year in September, unfortunately, the white fly does often take over a little bit more than you would like to. So there's a nice little bit of kale there. I shall cover that up in a minute. So... As we move around, the leeks aren't big enough to, to dig yet. I mean, you technically could eat them small, but I would always wait for them to get bigger. And then the courgettes, when do you pick courgettes? You pick them, they're ones that you pick at when you want to pick them at the right size. So you can pick them small, you can let them get a bit bigger. The only thing I would say is don't let them get too big because it sends signals to the plant that it should stop producing. So you do need to pick them reasonably regularly. But I would say that's definitely the maximum of what you'd ideally like it to get up to. But if you wanted to pick them smaller, say like that, there's nothing stopping you. Personally, I would wait for them to get a little bit bigger. That's quite, I would say that's about the perfect size in my opinion. Um, I've got all different varieties here. Anyone who watches my channel knows I like growing. So I've got those ones which are called Lebanese. I've got these ones which are pansy pans. They start off quite small, 
Now that's a little bit too small to take off just yet, but if you wait for them to get to the size of about a tennis ball, that's quite a nice size and you can let them roast whole in the oven. I think, well, I was up here the other day and I took some of the larger ones off. So for now, I can't take any off. Um, but you can let them get a little bit bigger if you want to, but I wouldn't let them get any bigger than about that, that size, those ones. But tennis ball size, more like that size, are quite nice. And like I said, you could roast them whole if you wanted to. So squashes and pumpkins, we don't harvest them at the moment. We wait for them to mature more. It's really important that you do that because they actually need to ripen, which is not, a lot of people don't realise that. As soon as they've grown to a certain size, they start picking them off and thinking that they need to ripen them somewhere else. They ripen best on the plant. It's not to say that they wouldn't ripen when you took them off, but they're more likely to rot if you take them off. Far better to leave them on here for as long as you can. What I would do is if I had one that looked like it had ripened, so say I've got a butternut squash over here, and it had actually coloured up and looked the right colour of a butternut squash, I, could, I would happily harvest it and eat it, eat it straight away. But I wouldn't go picking them all off um, at this stage, definitely not. I would pick the odd ones off if they looked like they were ripe and eat them. Other than that, I'll be waiting until October time. Um, you know, about Halloween time when we all start thinking about pumpkins and squashes a little bit more. You obviously want to get them off before the frosts hit, so that's what you're waiting for. But at the moment, this is the perfect temperature for them to lie here and to ripen and for them then to hopefully store really well throughout the winter through to the spring. And I'll give you more detailed instructions on how you do that near the time. So if we just wander around. We've got a few more bits up here. So this bottom bit is my father-in-law's just there. I can just wander around. I've got some dahlias here. I think, I, like I said on my last video, we are, I'm, I'm more just leaving these for the bees and just because they look really lovely because I've not had quite such large stems on them. I haven't, haven't been cutting so many to take them home. Um, but I, I may very well pick a few before I go and those. If you do pick dahlias, you need to take them back in a, in a, in a nice big jar of water because they flop really easily just to warn you. At times I started picking them and then by the time I'd got them home they never really quite picked up so just bring a little jar like the, the people that do them for shows have great big buckets they put them all in with water so that they last really well. So my beans well are doing absolutely fantastically. It's quite because there's so many I'm bringing one of these little stretchy fabric bags with me but I've got so many beans and French beans and I'm eating loads, the family's eating loads, we're freezing loads. I'm going to start looking up for some more ingenious ways of cooking with beans. So if anyone's got any recipes they want to share with me, that'd be really marvellous. So I'm going to pick a few and I think I'm going to have to come back because otherwise the video would just be me picking beans because I've got so many. There's absolutely tons on here of beans, so we're absolutely copious amounts. So, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, let me know how your beans are doing if you're having a good year but for me this has probably been my best year for a very very long time i've also got lots of runner beans as well and again questions are asked of when do i pick runner beans and again it's personal choice you're not waiting for them to ripen they taste no different whether they're big or small so it's really up to you you want to let them get to a decent size so again you get the most for, for your bean but if you haven't got any beans for dinner and you need a few and they're a little bit small, I mean, obviously you'd never pick them when they were that small. Um, and those are technically not quite ready, but if you wanted to pick those and slice them up, there'd be nothing wrong with that at all. You're waiting for more to get about to that thickness, albeit that's a little bit of a, a funny shaped one. Yeah, that, about that size, possibly a little bit bigger. But the thing is, the bigger you let them get, the more likely they'll get stringy. So, you know, it's, it's your choice really. The main thing when you're harvesting beans is to pick all the beans that are ready to pick. Don't pick what you need when they're getting bigger because, if, again, it's a bit like the French beans. If you leave them on there, the, the, the beans inside will start to swell out and it will send a signal to the plant that they need to be producing seed and then you won't get as many. And the ones that do come will have all the little seeds getting very large in there. So if you've got any odd-shaped ones that you don't want to eat, any oversized ones... Um, you've got to just pick them all off, you can't leave them on there, otherwise it will be sending the wrong message to the plant and you want to get as many beans to eat as possible. So, we head up. So I've got some lovely chard and some lovely lettuce, so I'm going to be taking some of this 
to definitely take home because I'm going to have a salad for lunch. And one of my top tips, and these are the cut and come again lettuce, so you don't pick the whole lettuce, you just pick, you know, just some little clumps of it um, and more will keep coming, is as soon as I get them home, I plunge it in a bowl of cold water and then they keep much better. Um, and then I use a salad spinner and then I pop them in the fridge and they last for a really, a fair few days when you do that. Um, so definitely straight home in a cold bowl of water, give them a rinse, spin them up, pop them in the fridge and they'll last a lot longer. If you don't do that, they'll go all floppy um, and they won't last very well. A bit like the spinach. You know, I know it's a pain trying to either pick the spinach as you need it or when you do pick it, wash it and put it in the fridge and it just keeps a heck of a lot longer, otherwise it goes all floppy and doesn't keep quite so well. So, um, I'm not harvesting any um, broccoli today because I did that the other day, so I know there isn't any underneath there. So there's no point whatsoever in going under there. So we're now looking at the sweet corn. Now I've cleared the barricades. I think most of you know, um, or if you've got an allotment, quite often there's a lot of predators um, that will try and get your sweet corn and they are very, very determined. So, you know, like I so said, we don't know whether they're squirrels, badgers, pheasants, who knows? But all we know is if you don't barricade it in, you're probably gonna lose it. So I'm just gonna head on in here to see what we've got. I don't know if you'll be able to, you probably won't be able to come in with me. And if I'm honest, I've got quite a few weeds in here as well because I've barricaded it up and we've just let it be. Now, yeah. you know, there's one there, but I can feel, what you're doing is you're feeling it to see if it's ready. Now that doesn't feel quite ready to me. Now, annoyingly, the ones I think that are ready are right over the back. So I'm gonna have to quickly head on in there and bring a couple back. So I've pulled a few out. Now it looks like suddenly something's been nibbling the ends, which is less than desirable. It looks like slugs, but I don't know. If it's slugs or earwigs, who knows? So what you're looking for is for them to feel quite thick around here. Now I'm still not entirely sure these, these are as ready as I would like them to be, but I thought, you know what, let's just get a couple out and see what they look like. So again, this no hard and fast is, is tough with corn. I don't think these are quite ready but I'm impatient to have a look, see whether I need to leave them for a little bit longer or whether I can start eating them. All right, so the top bit doesn't look great, but that's fine. So although that bit hasn't formed very well, and I think that's a pollination issue, the bottom bit there looks perfectly okay. I'm gonna have, um, I'm gonna have one each this evening. So let's have another look at another one, see how we're doing. Similar thing there. Okay, so that's perfectly okay. So I did pull one the other week and they weren't as far on as that. So that bit's never gonna, that bit's never gonna form. It's never gonna do what you want it to do. But if you cut it off at about there, it's perfectly okay to eat the rest of it. It's not gonna do you any harm at all. It's just not formed very well. So there we go. So I'm not, I don't think my corn's gonna be the be best crop in the world, but it's better than it getting eaten. So I will at least have something. And the last thing I'm gonna have a look at is a few of my autumn fruit in raspberries. So let's head up and have a look up there. So I'd love to know how everyone else's corn's doing. So, oh, it's quite warm up here and it's up past nine. So it's weird. we had to stop the filming halfway through because the camera was getting too hot. So these are my autumn fruit in raspberries. And unfortunately I have a little bit of slug damage, but some of them are okay. I probably should have got them off a little bit sooner, if truth be told. But you know what, even if there's just a few for me to have on my breakfast or as a little bit of a snack, they're worth having. So there we go. Actually, sometimes once you lift them up, you see more, don't you? They hide, don't they? And they're trying to do them. Yeah, I definitely should have picked a few of these off a little bit sooner, I think. So even me with a YouTube channel, I can't get everything done as quickly as I'd like everything done. So I do hope you've enjoyed me taking you for a tour around the allotment and showing you what I'm harvesting. I'd love to know what you're harvesting at the moment, anything that you're really enjoying at the moment or anything you'd like a little bit of help with.